hello and welcome to the fourth video of the series in this video we'll see how do you put your web application on a load balancer that is multiple instances of your web application should be behind a load balancer to scale horizontally and to achieve high availability okay there are a couple of methods over here the easiest one is say if you are using a Debian based operating system then you get it from their apt repositories saying apt get install nginx and if you are using say red hat linux then it's about yum install nginx uh, there is one more way you can set it up uh, which is setting it up from the, the source code uh, but that would require certain dependencies like pcre pcre stands for uh, Perl compatible regular expressions, uh, Zlib is data compression stuff, and the OpenSSL. All right, so I have on on my machine already set up nginx over here. So if you go to uh, after it is set up on on your machine, you can go to the sbin folder and run this. Nginx. The way you do is you say sudo and run this executable. So Nginx has started. Uh, remember, Nginx by default runs on port 80, which is a privileged port, and th that is the reason I have used the super user do command over here. All right, let's just go to localhost. See, it shows Nginx is up and running. Great okay uh, if you remember from the previous videos we have this spring boot rest api over here uh, which has only a single uh, action method right now which is mapped to the root and what it does is let's go to the implementation it just gives us a json result uh, which is basically a product it has three fields ID name and description and description is what we are reading from our application configuration file uh, which is over here all right so uh, for the sake of simplicity what I have done here is I have already copied the spring boot jars into three folders if you see instance one two and three that they contain the same source code it's only the configuration that is different over here say the instance one runs on port 8081 instance two on port 8082 and uh, for the sake of this demo I have added the string uh, which would basically tell us that from where the response from what application the response is basically coming from which instance of the application say instance 2 I, I have appended instance 2 over here so if you go to instance 3 these externalized configurations we have instance 3 over here alright so let's get started then so our nginx is right now running to make changes to its configuration let us stop it now and the way you do it is you say minus s stop nginx is stop now we can see here you refresh this yeah all right so you go to your nginx installation folder go to conf and this is the file that we are interested in just open this file uh, this would obviously require sudo commands you can use even the Vim editor. I'm, I'm using the inbuilt mousepad here in my Ubuntu machine. So I will say, okay. So this is the file we have. See, um, and the first property here is about worker processes. A worker process is the one that would handle the large number of concurrent requests which are basically worker connections uh, generally 
I mean, when you, when you install this for the first time, it would show the show up here as one. Uh, the recommended setting for production is the number of cores in your processor. If your processor is quad core, you put four. If it's octa core, you say eight. So minus, I know it's dual core. I can say two, or a better option is to say auto. Let Nginx figure out uh, how many cores are there in your production machine. And worker connections are means basically the number of concurrent requests. So if my machine is dual core, say two, so this will be two into 1024. That would mean it, it can handle 2048 concurrent requests. Okay, now moving to the next section. Uh, this is what we are interested in. How do we configure this? So there is something called upstream block. You can say upstream. Uh, you know what? You can actually get all this from Nginx website. Go to nginx.org. Go to documentation over here. Say how to use it as an HTTP load balancer. All right. So. Uh, the, the load balancing methods are say round robin, least connected or IP hashes, all about sticky sessions. Okay, this is what we are interested in. Let's just put the same stuff over there and we'll change the server names. So this is where I am. I'll paste it over here. So over here, um, everything on my is on my local machine so I'll, I'll just put either I can put localhost or the IP address and the IP address for localhost is 127.0.0.1 then the port number 8081 same way I have three instances on my machine here so I'll paste the same stuff here the port is <coughs> a two eight three okay and the next section that is of interest to us is location uh, well before that we can even change the name of this upstream block and uh, let me call it MX example cluster so uh, now coming to the location parameter we can actually comment these these guys over here which are provided by default and will route what our application is about so the way you do it is you say proxy pass proxy underscore pass and it's it will be HTTP protocol and name of your upstream block put a name over here the same name save this yeah okay next is let's go to our folder where we have put our applications here I have put everything on, on my machine but here instance 1, 2 or 3 would mean separate um, server machines so let's just run this jar using the standard, standard java jar command so here we see the first instance of our web application which is on the servlet container under 2 is running on port 8081 same way let's run even these instances let me run even the third one yes it's 
Nissan 8083. Now let's just go to localhost and okay before that we got to run nginx basically pardon me for that sudo nginx so our nginx is up and running now let's run this guy so you see the first request has come from instance 1 the first response has come from instance 1 let's put up one more request say reload tab this goes to instance 2 the response is coming from instance 2 third one is coming from instance 3 if you keep refreshing like this say 1 then 2 and then 3 uh, by default nginx works in, in a round robin fashion if you see over here and to make it work on say least connected fashion that is uh, that is what is the recommended setting in production this one you can say least underscore con and this way uh, nginx would uh, route the request to the server that is least loaded that means which is not so busy and this is what is sh should be done in production now let us just kill one of the instance here let's say we will kill instance number 3 so it has it has been stopped all right now let us just refresh our thing say it goes to 1 it goes to next one goes next request goes to 2 third one again comes back to 1 because our uh, third instance is not running so th this is how you achieve high availability that is for any reason say for network disruption or say for even for deployment purposes you have taken one of the node down and it, it's not available to it's not available for serving uh, requests so or receiving requests rather so nginx is smart enough that it would work with the rest of the available instances now let us just put this back up let's run the third instance then under nginx settings it, it may take some 5 to 10 seconds to load to, to recognize it back rather and that should do the trick say 1 2 it is still going to 1 2 3 now see our instance 3 is back up and running after repair or once it is online so th this is an important stuff uh, ho ho about scaling horizontally and increasing the throughput of your application basically if you have any questions or any any suggestions do post them under the comment section here uh, well, thanks for watching for now. Thank you.